I'm Lee Barfanuni, and I'm here with Molly Alvarez, and we're here representing Girls Gone Strong. Today we are going to show you a bodyweight only HIT workout. So HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training, and this workout you can do at home, so there's no equipment whatsoever necessary. There are lots of ways you can make it easier or harder, and um, we'll talk about those as we go along. But what we're going to ask you to do is six exercises. Each exercise is going to be done for 20 seconds. So I'm really bad at math, and I had to ask Molly <laughs> to calculate how long. I was like, so is that a minute? It's not a minute. It's, a minute. it's two minutes of work. So it's going to be six exercises done for 20 seconds each, so two full minutes of work, followed by one minute of rest. And of course, if you're going through the workout and you're starting to think it might be a little bit much for you, feel free to back the exercises down a little bit. Maybe if you have to do 15 seconds instead of 20 or something, that's fine. But the goal is to do the six exercises for 20 seconds, so two minutes of work and then a minute of rest, and then go through five times. So that would be a total of a 15 minute workout. Mm -hmm. But again, if you need to do fewer rounds, that's okay too. Or if you're feeling awesome and you wanna do more, yeah, that's cool. Totally, so we just want you to feel free to adapt either up or down, whichever way, sideways. <laughs> You're going to stand up nice and tall and you're going to hinge forward from your hips and you're going to walk out and if Molly has any coaching cues, she will do them. Yes, she's going to stay okay. nice and neutral so she's not going to let her hips sag. Neck is also neutral through her broomstick on her back that would touch her um, top of her head, upper back, and her tailbone. And then I'm going to take my right knee and I'm going to pull it up towards my right armpit and set it back down. Left knee. Left armpit and set it back down. And then she's, she's so back. yeah, she's so stable right there in her lower back. I think like when she's in this position, she could balance a glass of wine on her tailbone. That's what you want to think about. Nobody wants to spill wine. Nobody wants to spill wine. You know, drink it up. You do and it. then you're walking back. So the speed with which you do that is going to be totally dependent on how comfortable and confident you feel in the position. So if you're like, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right, go slow. You're only going to get as much out of it as you do with quality. So the speed is just going to vary depending on how confident you feel with the movement. The next exercise is a squat jump. So you're going to position your feet whatever feels comfortable for you. I'm a little bit taller, so I usually have a little bit of a wider stance, but for most people, right at um, shoulder width or maybe a little bit wider is going to feel good. Toes turn out slightly. When you do the squat jump, you're going to sit back into your hips, drive your knees out, bring your arms back, and you're going to prepare to explode up. And then you want to land softly. That's really important. You don't want to come down and slam into the ground. So you're going to jump up, land softly, and repeat. So it looks like this. Okay? Any coaching cues? Um, the only thing I would say is that if you're in the 20 second interval and you're getting really tired of squat jumps, just switch to bodyweight squats. So if you're halfway through and you're jumping and then your legs are just jelly, you're just here. Yep. And so it's 20 seconds of that. Yep, or if you know that you're not comfortable with squat jumps to begin with, don't do them, just do a bodyweight squat and there's yeah. no problem with that. Cool, so another way you can advance that, if you want to make it more advanced, you can add weight. So if you happen to have a weighted vest, yep. or a medicine ball or something you can hold to make it more challenging, you can do that too. Absolutely. Okay, um, the next exercise is going to be a push-up. So if you're doing push-ups on the ground, then you're going to get into your plank position that I was just in for the walkout, and you're going to lower your entire body together as you pull your shoulder blades together. And lower, or excuse me, a, a, sorry guys, bring your body back up as one unit while you push your shoulder blades apart. So you know, everything goes down, everything comes up. And guys, her, her elbows are tucked somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. Having goal post yeah. arms, those are unhappy shoulders, okay? So you want your elbows tucked somewhere. If this is 90 degrees and this is zero, somewhere between 30 and 45. And like she said, her shoulder blades were coming together as she went down and she drove them apart at the top, maintaining a nice neutral spine and keeping everything really safe. Yeah. So when you do a push-up, it seems like it's upper body exercise, but it's your entire body. Everything is engaged. So if you aren't at a place where you're doing them on the floor just yet, you will get there. But to start, we'd like you to use an incline. So if you have a really sturdy table or a couch or something at home that you can place your hands on, just make sure that wherever you place your hands when you're doing an incline, that you're coming down and your chest is at the level of your hands. So a lot of times people do incline, they put their hands up too high or too low. So you still want to be about, I usually say just like nipple line. Yeah, yeah. Nipple line the middle, that's where your hands should be. Yeah, and again, if you're more advanced, then you can elevate your feet on yeah. that table or that couch mm -hmm. or whatever. Make it a decline. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. And the next exercise is gonna be a reverse lunge. So to do the reverse lunge, you're gonna start with your feet about hip bone width apart, and you're just gonna step straight back. So think about if you had headlights coming out of your hip bones, they'd be going straight ahead, and your feet are on railroad tracks. So you don't wanna step out this way, you don't wanna do like a curtsy and step behind, we're just stepping straight back, staying nice and tall. When you go to reverse the motion, you're pulling yourself up with that front glute. We're actually gonna alternate in this one. I hadn't done that side of it. <laughs> and if you notice Molly's hip, knee, and ankle when she steps back, they're all in line with each other. She's not going to like this chain. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. going to from this side. Yeah. Get yeah. up staying nice and tall. If you have a hard time um, staying upright, you can always put your hands behind your head, and that'll kind of force you to pull your shoulders back and stay up tall. If you want to make this more challenging, you can create a deficit. So you'll stand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Molly, if you stood on top of this, you'd probably get out of the frame. <laughs> frame. So <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm taller than Molly. So you'll stand on an object. Um, I wouldn't start with anything more than a couple inches tall. And then you're adding some more depth, some more range of motion. This also helps it become a little bit more glute dominant. So you can do that. The other thing that you can do to make it more challenging, if that's just too easy for you, is you can turn it into a jump. We have a lot of jumping in this workout, which is why we didn't include this in the first place. But if you're super advanced and you want to make this more challenging, then you can just do an alternating punch jump. Cool. So 20 seconds of that. And then we're moving on to the rolling plank. Yes, absolutely. So the rolling plank is... You're gonna show okay, me too? Okay, I'll show you on the forearms, and then Molly will show you on the hands, because those are your two options, okay? So for the rolling plank on the forearms, you're gonna bring your, your arms actually parallel to each other, just like this, and come into a plank position, okay? And then you'll roll to one side, and now you're in a side plank, and you'll take that top arm and pull it back to really squeeze your shoulder blades together and engage your upper back. Then you're gonna come back to the center, and you're gonna switch sides. So I'm gonna side plank on my right side, and I'm gonna pull my shoulder blade back to engage my upper back, and I'm just gonna keep alternating for 20 seconds. And Molly's gonna show you how to do the same thing on your hands. And it's really important when she's doing this, she's retracting that shoulder blade and squeezing her upper back. That's one of the limitations of doing at-home workouts with just body weight, is there's not a lot of upper back stuff that you can do. So make sure when you're doing that, you're really retracting the shoulder blade. You notice she was twisting on her toes as well, and I'll show you that when I do mine. You're not twisting through your lower back, you're actually rotating on your toes. Yes. So you're actually switching from a regular plank to a side plank. So I'm sorry. here. I'm pulling my shoulder blade back and down and rotating on my toes. Cool. So you'll do that for 20 seconds, whichever version feels better for you. A lot of people don't like being on their elbows. Mm -hmm. a lot, I've, I've actually trained a lot of people in the gym where they're like, every time we do a plank, it hurts my elbows. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> it's just, no, it's everybody's wrong. different, okay? And I just don't like my elbows touched in general. So there is something a little bit weird. Molly's definitely a little bit fine. So guys, the last thing <laughs> we're gonna do is the hinge jump. And I actually learned this back in October when I was at the Onnit certification. It's very similar to a squat jump, but it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a hinge jump. Some people call it a body weight kettlebell swing because it's a very similar motion. You're gonna hinge back at the hip. So knees are soft, you're not squatting down, it's a hinge, and then you're gonna explode up by bringing your hips and squeezing your glutes at the top, so you're... Yeah. So it's the same movement as, it's a very, very similar movement as a squat jump, except as you notice, the hips are going back instead of down. That's the main difference. Yep, and you wanna land softly again, you wanna control your knees when you land, you don't want your knees to come in, you wanna stay really stiff through your core, you don't wanna come up and hyperextend. If your core is not stiff, and that's a tendency that a lot of people have, so make sure you stay really stiff in the core, squeeze those glutes, and use that, those hips to power you up. One thing that can help with that is that when you go through the, through the actual jump, bring yourself into a plank, like where you would be if you were actually in a forearm plank, because that kind of helps mentally engage that, like you're not just opening up, you're jumping and you're in plank position, okay? So 20 seconds of each of those exercises, rest for a minute, and then do it again. Yes, and then five times if you're feeling up to it. If you're not, you can do it a little bit less. And if you're feeling like doing more, you can do more. Yeah. So there you go. Hope you enjoy it. See you next time.